Janeiro State University. And I'll be giving a lightning talk about how to represent model discrepancy or model error in commonly used SEIR type models uh, with a case study of the 2016 Zika outbreak in Brazil. And so before Americo and I started working together, he uh, worked with some other co-authors to look at this Zika outbreak in Brazil in 2016, and they got data from the Brazilian Ministry of Health that's shown in blue. This is cumulative number of cases over the year. And in orange was a sort of original model with nominal parameters that they found through a careful literature search. And you can see there's this huge discrepancy between the data and the model output. So then they went on and calibrated those model parameters and there were two uh, variations with slight differences in the constraints on what the model parameters could be. And but you can, so here the, there's much better agreement between the data and the model, but still this inconsistency between the two. And so that's where I come in because I work on how to model discrepancy um, for these couple differential equations. And so in black, we have the original model equations uh, that they started with, this SEI, R, SEI model. And in red are these embedded discrepancy terms. And using that embedded model with the calibrated discrepancy terms and nominal parameters of the original model, we now have this consistent output between the model and the data. So that's great. Here's all four models together. Um, so you can see them at once and compare. Here's a zoom on this critical period. And finally, we looked at a couple different underreporting scenarios. Uh, we know, especially right now, underreporting is a huge issue and how to really deal with this is there's definitely more to do here, but we just looked at a couple hypothetical scenarios. Here is uh, assuming 10% underreporting, and you can see there's uh, the model is able to adapt and still consistent with the data. Here is a hypothetical situation with assuming 50% underreporting, and again, we have this nice consistency. Uh, lots of things to still do. How does this apply to the current situation? Um, it turns out that the embedded discrepancy in this work looked sort of like a linear feedback. And so we're looking into connections to control theory. Um, can we interpret these new terms in a physiological or epidemiological sense? And for more information and details, please check out uh, our paper that just came out in chaos a couple months ago. Thanks very much.